Hi everyone, I'm Christian. Uh, back in January, I put up on YouTube a, a short video just showing how we use some technology in worship, how we use some click tracks, how we use some loops, etc. I had a lot of questions from a number of you, uh, and just really want to kind of add a little bit to how we've moved on and how we're just using things a little bit further advanced now than we did back in January. Okay, so the setup on the floorboard on a Sunday remains the same, the Pod X3 Live. Um, and then on this side, we've got the Ability Controller, which has been absolutely superb for us. Uh, really loving this. Set up from this, really basic at the back, we've got a power cable, a MIDI cable, which goes down into the FireWire device underneath, uh, and also the expression cable that comes out for the expression pedal. Uh, we're now using an M Audio expression pedal, finding it a little bit more stable uh, and more range of movement for swelling the pads and Ableton, which I'll show you in a moment. On the back of the FireWire device, we've simply got the FireWire cable that goes up to the MacBook. We usually have three cables coming out of here. Um, for the click track and then also for the loop left and right um, but for now I'm just using one for a demo in practice and then I've added in just a patch cable from the Pod X3 going into the FireWire device which just allows me to record anything that comes off here live um, so I'm using a looper uh, on a Sunday morning sometimes within Ableton um, which is maybe a video for another day uh, and let me show you the template that we're running on Ableton okay so this is my um, Ableton template um, set up very similar to the one you were seeing in the previous video, we still have this blank MIDI file for reference, one for song title, then we have the channel that actually contains most of the loops, uh, we have additional loops for some of the ones such as like the Happy Day which we demoed on the last one, plays a bit of the Black Eyed Peas here and here as well as the Happy Day at the same time. We have the ambient loop pads, so at the top here we have ambient pads that trigger off in the 12 different keys, then we have a looper which may be a video for another day, but basically we just use Ableton to record sections off my guitar and then loop back again for me to play on top or record on top for building up sounds. And then we've got some new channels which we've added. We've got a, a control, which is uh, whether we want the metronome on or off. Uh, this took us quite a long time to solve, but it's been a, a fantastic addition to the way that we do our click tracks. And then finally, cue tracks as well. So just starting up here at the ambient pads, um, like I said, we've got the 12 different keys, and they're matched up to usually channel 1 on my foot pedal, um, and then A, B, C, D, E, and I usually tend to use G. The way we allocate them is we click this MIDI allocation button up here, press that, so it goes blue, we click on the patch that we want, and then we press the key on the foot controller that corresponds with that, and that will match that in for that, that section. And we'll do that for the songs all the way through our set. What we've also done is, if you note know, on the tempo button up here, so activate the metronome, we've set that set that to um, MIDI channel number one, uh, note value 44, and then if we go into this metronome file here, you can simply see that we've set this to correspond. So again, number 44 uh, on the controller, uh, we've set that to a MIDI, uh, set the envelope to do that, and then we actually output that because we're on a Mac via the Mac's internal AC driver channel 1. And then if we actually look at what the, the MIDI control looks like, that says on bar 1, if we do that the other way around, on bar 1 it wants the metronome to be off. Um, or we can have the metronome on, or we can have it on for a certain number of bars and then off. So what that means in real terms is if we go down and trigger off something that's got a click track in, so you should be able to hear the click in the background coming through the PA, I've routed that differently. So we finished playing this song, and I want to go just to an ambient pad, let's say in A, but I didn't want the click to carry on going on. Now previously I had to do a little bit of tap dancing to get into the Omni mode to turn the click off. Now when I hit the A, or the master button that will take me to that A pad, on the first beat of the bar it sends a signal to the metronome to turn the metronome off. Now this A pad is matched to, um, or this, this slider is matched to a volume pedal on the foot on my football which I showed you earlier, so if I just stand on that now and fade that up you'll hear that ambient pad swelling and off and then I've if I hit stop you hear that fade out I've added just a little bit of um, uh, effects onto this ambient pad since the last time that we spoke just to add a little bit further reverb and delay so it just doesn't stop immediately but it fades out quite nicely so that's how we've kind of set our ambient pad. There's our, our metronome that we talked about, which we've added as well. So in some songs, we've turned the metronome on, uh, and then we set it for a certain number of bars. So, for example, the Bittersweet Symphony, which we, we do as an introduction, 
that's running for, if we go all the way to the end of this file here, let's minimize that down so it's a bit easier to see, there we go, that's running for well, about 37 bars, just over 37 bars, so we'd go into our metronome for that one, we'd go along to the end of 37 bars, we'd put a break in there, and another break, and drag that down, and then that will then stop the metronome. I and mean, if we get that exactly right, you can stop the metronome as the track finishes. So you haven't still got the click in your ear, which is really nice. A couple of uh, different ways that we're doing tracks in some ways. You'll see that we've started adding in different versions. So here we've got Glory to God. Uh, we've got Glory to God Forever in A. So we can trigger that one off. And again, it's loaded with a few of the guitar parts, a few kind of additional drum parts, etc. Just give it a bit of a feel. And we've also got Glory to God Forever in B. And then all we've done is we've copied down some of these B pads so that at the end of the song, if we wanted to go off in a bit more detail, we could do that just over that generic pad in B. And you can see that the metronome's turned itself off for this particular track. We've also got um, down here a couple that we've started doing um, that we run without any loop, but we just use the metronome. So Great and Glorious by Abundant Life, we're running to 136 BPM. And again, we can just match that one into a controller, click that one in, and it's just going to give us the click exactly where it would be, but with no information playing. So the click just into our ears. A couple of other things that we've kind of added, um, just to recap from last time, we've got some that we set up in different sections. So, for example, How He Loves Us. This is the piano-led version that we use. And then we'll click into the next section. And if I just jump forward into one of the pre-turns, there we go. So again, using it this way allows us the facility to jump to any single section that we like. So if I now show you the big chorus. So it gives us the option to move around anywhere within the track. Um, and we can also set some levels of automation so that once it plays one track, it finishes. So the Happy Day is a really good example of that. If we click off on the click, click into the intro, I'll pull the volume down so you can hear me. But you can see that that's playing the intro. And we've set that intro to play down here for eight bars and then move on to the next section. So you see it moves straight on to verse one. Verse 1, if we click on that, plays for 18 bars, then it moves down to chorus. The chorus plays for 16 bars, but then moves back up. So this will constantly go verse 1, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, until we press one of our buttons to control it and take it somewhere else. Then we've got some tracks like uh, How He Loves Us, almost a, a little bit different, but with kind of a very... Um, ooh, a very kind of xylophone type feel, very much more kind of stripped down. And we run this as an entire track all the way through. Turn the metro off so you can hear it. And we tend to run this really nicely. Now, you can see over here we've added a new track called Cues. And if you listen carefully, you'll hear this come out now. So in here, we take, um, what we tend to do is we take the MP3, drop it into something like Logic, and then we've got a whole folder worth of vocal cues, which will then match up to the track exactly where we want it. So through here, it'll go verse, pre-chorus, turn around, verse two, etc. Quite useful for some songs that maybe aren't that obvious where to go. It also means that if we suddenly jump back into a song that we've not done for a few months, and it's not got a fluid arrangement, but it's fixed like this, then that voice will come in ev into the ears of everybody wearing in-ears in the band, so that we can all stay together and know exactly where we're going. Um, we kind of use this for, we do a song called Go by Hillsongs United, uh, and we found that the song needed this because it was quite difficult to know exactly when the track was coming in. So let me play the version without the drums and the bass. Chorus, one, two. And that's where we come in. But without that, it was really difficult to get the, the moment exactly right, um, to know exactly when to come in on the verse, and then it counts us through, there's like a 16 bar musical outbreak but you need to make changes at the eighth bar and again at the twelfth bar and this just counts us through that and tells us exactly where we need to be so that's the the clue the cue tracks that we've added uh, there's the click track that we've added the looper function if i just show you that very quickly we've set this down here so it will match the tempo of whatever we're doing 
Um, the record button is matched to one of my MIDI channels. We can record for a certain number of bars. And then once we press finish, it will just play back whatever I've played into it. And then if I press it again, I can then record again and just keep adding to it. So that's basically our new template. A couple of other things just to show you. Um, it's really unlocked uh, a great amount of creativity. So we're for our, certainly for our Reconnect, which is our evening youth worship event uh, that we run once a month, we've been able to just unlock a little bit more um, creativity, give some familiar sounds for those that may not be used to our worship that we do in church. So I've already mentioned Bittersweet Symphony that we kind of use as a creative intro sometimes. And we've moved this into B, and then at the end of it, it just literally hangs on that B note to allow us to go to wherever else. We've used Bru Bruno Mars. I'm just going to turn the metronome off so you can hear. Um, so we finished. Uh, Phil Wickham's I See Your Face, You're Beautiful. You're Beautiful, and as we finish it, we trigger off this pad with the metronome. And then we just on when I see your face. And I don't know if you see what we've done there, but we've literally just taken the instrumental track and we've cut out the section exactly that we want. Um, and then we've transposed it down five to put it into the same key. Um, and we've done that similar with a couple of other different things. So we did an intro a little while ago where we used some of the Calvin Harris. Um, you're not alone. And again, we had the drums, bass, electric guitar, and all the other instruments playing on top of this. Um, it just gave a really lively feel. Other ones that we've tried to be a little creative with, I think I showed you last time how we used the Black Eyed Peas with Here I Am To Work, uh, with um, Happy Day. We've also, in if I scroll down a little bit further, show you some of the other ones that we've used. Uh, we've used a version of One Way um, that plays over the instrumental of Tiny Temper. Um, which again, um, is really creative and puts a really fresh arrangement on it. Um, and then finally, we've got some different versions, I think, of um, Blessed Be Your Name that we did over Coldplay's Viva La Vida. Um, so take the instrumental of Viva La Vida. Um, and just move it one semitone and we can have a really nice fresh version of Blessed Be Your Name. It just allows us to get some different sounds and creativity on stage that we couldn't usually do. It also allows us to really kind of give some familiar sounds to people that are listening to the latest album. So uh, Our God Is Greater by Chris Tomlin had a really nice, this is the album version of it. So that's the actual album MP3 with everything in it which you'll probably recognise. And then we were able to get hold of some Reason files and, and remaster them slightly, which give a really great feel. So on a Sunday, we can do um, a really similar arrangement in a slightly different key, but there we go. I can't sing as high as Tomlin. You hear that kick drum coming in? Uh, we're not afraid to put an extra kind of electronic kick drum sounds underneath some of our acoustic kit and actually it layers up really nicely so um, we've edited this a few different times to put different versions in but there's our god so hopefully that gives you a bit more of an insight into some of the ways that we use in Ableton um, and if you look at the video before this you'll see kind of how we control it and how we trigger it all off and this just shows you a little bit more detail for the template that's here again any questions feel free to drop me an email um, my email should be appearing at the bottom of the screen um, and be happy to answer any questions that you've got uh, god bless and take care bye bye